G'day, he's going. Right, let's look at a solid bar of rock in a stream, a river, whatever. So let's just draw one. Give you a real rough guide on how to not use paint. Let's give it, oh yeah, that'll do. Right, let's draw in bedrock in the stream and let's put a bar of rock in. There. That's our bedrock. Let's put in a sediment layer. And how are we going to do it? Let's let's go quick and nasty. And we'll go down like that. And we'll put this sediment layer up there. So these are our alluvial gravels in a stream. There and there. Now we'll add some water. Ugh, yuck. I'm terrible at these things. Anyway, water layer. The important part will go up. There's our water. So what I want to really quickly go over here is the sediment layer on this side is going to sit at this level. As the flood water is dying down, this is how it forms. This side builds up to the top of your bar of rock running across the stream. This side gets eroded out, all because of the action of the water. Here's the flow of your water running this way. As it goes over the bar of rock, gravity takes over and pushes that way. So anything that's traveling along, like your sediments, your sands, your gravels and your rocks and your gold, it goes down as well. So everything's pushing down. It's not going to go past bedrock. So you get turbulence right here. No, okay, that one. So you get this pattern spins around, and because you've still got directional flow running this way, what happens is as this stuff's spinning around, it starts getting lifted out in this direction. That's the way it goes. Things start to slow down. This is where it's all happening really quick. In there, things start to slow down and they drop out. And that's where you'll normally find your gold after it's boiled out from behind something. This area just behind it, where it boils out, that's normally where you find all your gold. And again, because it's starting to drop down on the back side, it starts to strip it away again. But this is where it builds up. Okay, let's just have a look at what this would look like when the stream or river is in full flood. So we'll chuck our sediment layer in. That's where your sediment's going to be during a full flood. Now, of course, it depends entirely on the height of the flood as to how much of this sediment will be there during the peak of a flood. We'll put our water layer in. We'll make it a big flood. We'll go right up there. There we go. Right, so here's our water flow. No, not, yeah, that colour. Here's our water flow. Lots of water, so we'll give it a big arrow. Not so much velocity. 
right? Because we've got a big body of water. So as, as a river floods and it rises up, it spreads out. So the velocity actually slows down a bit. But down here, down in the bottom, where all your, um, oh, your bed load is, that's the word I'm looking for, where all your sediments are traveling, all your heavy stuff, all your sands and silts and that are all traveling up here. This stuff just always stays down the bottom because of the weight of it. Peak of the flood, that's when this stuff's moving. As soon as the flood water starts to recede, most of this stuff will stop straight away. Get a little reduction in the water level. Let's, let's halve it. So we get that much reduction in water level. All your real heavy stuff in your sediment layer, it won't move anymore. There's not enough water pressure pushing against it, or force, if you want to go that way. There's not enough force pushing against the real heavy stuff to move it. But what it does move is it moves all the light material that's still mixed up with it. So all your sands and silts, that have you know, they've settled out of this because the, the water level starting to drop down. They start to settle out. But the thing is, they start to move because as your water level reduces, something increases, and that's the velocity. Because it's narrowing down in the stream, the velocity picks up, but it doesn't tend to take the big stuff with it. It takes the, the lighter material. That's not hard and fast rule. That's just a very quick explanation of what's going on. There's a lot of stuff going on. So the flood level's reducing. So let's bring the sediment layer down to the top of the bedrock. Come down, let's say it's about there. Put our water back on top. So that's where we're at. Flood water's reducing, sediment layer's reducing. This side will pretty much stay at that height now that we're down to bedrock. This side starts to get eroded away more. What's happening is your water flow is coming along. And now we're starting to actually get some downward pressure here. As the flood water is decreasing, we're starting to get some downward pressure behind our bar of rock. It's starting to erode this out. Flood water gets down a bit lower. And it's going to start to look like this. Yeah, water level in. Hang on. Do it right. If you're going to do it, do it right. Right. Put our water level back in. There we go. That's where it changes. So what's happened is that that water level can't go any lower over the bar of rock, the bedrock, but it can drop behind it. So it starts chewing all this material out. So he's getting a, a vortice. So let's just follow the path of water. Comes down. And it does this. It creates a vortice in behind the bar of rock. What happens with a vortice is it lifts the material up and sends it down this way. And your gold 
if there's any gold that's dropped over there, it's going to start to sit around here. Because the action of the water churns it, all this stuff that was built up during the flood, getting churned, and it's getting dropped there. Right, that's how it works with a bar of rock. The next video I'll talk about objects that can be moved, like trees, like large rocks, and things like that, and I'll explain how the water pattern changes behind that. That's the next video. If you don't have time to watch, I'll just say, hope you're fine lots of yellow, get out there and get into it. And until the next video, which is going to talk about rocks and objects that can be moved, hope you have a good one, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.